Global News would like to greet you and everyone. Today, we will help you update important international events, while bringing multi-dimensional perspectives and deep reflections on current issues. Topic going on in the world. Right now are the main news that will be in the program. On first day of Trump hush money trial, prosecutors say he corrupted 2016 election. Drone, rocket attacks targeted U.S. forces in Iraq, U.S. officials say. Pro-Palestinian protesters arrested at Yale, Colombia cancels in-person classes. Germany arrests three people suspected of giving technology to China. New York prosecutors said on the first day of Donald Trump's criminal hush money trial that the former president broke the law and corrupted the 2016 election by trying to cover up sexual encounters with a porn star and a Playboy model, while his defense lawyer said he committed no crime. Jurors in the historic trial also heard briefly from the prosecution's first witness, former National Enquirer publisher David Pecker, who prosecutors say participated in a catch-and-kill scheme to suppress unflattering stories about Trump and help him get elected. In the first-ever trial of a former U.S. president, Trump is charged with falsifying business records to cover up a $130,000 payment to porn star Stormy Daniels in 2016 to keep quiet about a sexual encounter she says they had 10 years earlier. Trump has pleaded not guilty and denies the encounter took place. Prosecutors portrayed the payment as a criminal effort to deceive voters at a time when Trump was facing other accusations of crude sexual behavior. Colangelo told the jury that they would hear Trump working out the details of the scheme in recorded conversations and see an extensive paper trail to back up the testimony of witnesses. Russia has a force of 20,000 to 25,000 troops trying to storm the eastern Ukrainian town of Chesivyar and surrounding villages, Ukraine's military said on Monday, describing the situation in the area as difficult. Ukraine has full control of Chesivyar, which lies on strategic high ground in the partially occupied Donetsk region, but Kiev's top commander has said Russia wants to capture the town by May 9 when it marks Soviet Victory Day in World War II. The situation around the town is difficult, however the situation is controllable. Our defenders are both receiving reinforcement and stabilizing the line," said Nazar Balashin, a spokesman for the Eastern Military Command. It's somewhere around 20,000 to 25,000 Russian servicemen trying to storm Chase of Yar and the outskirts of settlements near it, he said in televised comments on public broadcaster Suspilm. The capture of Chase of Yar would bring Russia closer to two strategically important cities under Ukrainian control, Kramatorsk and Slovyansk. Russia has already been inching forward, but long delayed U.S. Military assistance is expected to reach Ukraine relieving critical ammunition shortages in a matter of days following its expected final approval this week. U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria faced two separate rocket and explosive drone attacks in less than 24 hours, Iraqi security sources and U.S. officials told Reuters on Monday, in the first such incidents reported after a near three-month pause. Two drones were shot down near Ain al-Assad Air Base that hosts U.S. troops in the western Iraqi province of Anbar out of an abundance of caution, a U.S. official said. That followed five rockets fired from northern Iraq toward U.S. forces at a base in Rumelan in remote northeastern Syria on Sunday, according to U.S. and Iraqi officials. There were no reports of casualties or significant damage from the attacks. A U.S. defense official, speaking on condition of anonymity, said the rocket attack on Sunday targeted U.S. troops, in what appeared to be the first attack against U.S. troops in Iraq and Syria since February 4. On Saturday, a massive explosion at a military base in Iraq killed a member of an Iraqi security force that includes Iran-backed groups. The force commander said it was an attack, while the army said it was investigating and that there were no warplanes in the sky at the time. The U.S. military denied involvement. Near-daily rocket and drone strikes on U.S. forces began in mid-October. A group of Iran-backed Shiite Muslim armed groups known as the Islamic Resistance in Iraq claimed responsibility, citing U.S. backing for Israel's war in Gaza. Relatives of Israeli hostages held in Gaza will mark the start of Passover, a week-long festival that celebrates freedom, with a renewed plea to the government to make a deal to return their missing loved ones. Passover, starting on Monday evening, is traditionally observed with a Seder, a holiday feast when families gather and celebrate the biblical account of the Israelites' freedom from Egyptian slavery. 
This year, many families in Israel are expected to leave empty seats at the table to represent those killed or taken hostage in the Hamas attacks of October 7 last year. Rachel Goldberg Pollan's 23-year-old son Hirsch was captured and taken to Gaza after his arm was blown off on October 7, when Hamas fighters attacked the Supernova Music Festival in southern Israel. She said this year's Passover would be more profound than ever and urged the government to find a way to return the hostages. Hamas fighters killed some 1,200 people and abducted another 253 on October 7, according to Israeli tallies, triggering the war in Gaza in which more than 34,000 Palestinians have been killed, according to Gaza health authorities. Relatives of Israeli hostages held in Gaza will mark the start of Passover, a week-long festival that celebrates freedom, with a renewed plea to the government to make a deal to return their missing loved ones. Passover, starting on Monday evening, is traditionally observed with a Seder, a holiday feast when families gather and celebrate the biblical account of the Israelites' freedom from Egyptian slavery. This year, many families in Israel are expected to leave empty seats at the table to represent those killed or taken hostage in the Hamas attacks of October 7 last year. Rachel Goldberg Pollan's 23-year-old son Hirsch was captured and taken to Gaza after his arm was blown off on October 7, when Hamas fighters attacked the Supernova Music Festival in southern Israel. She said this year's Passover would be more profound than ever and urged the government to find a way to return the hostages. Hamas fighters killed some 1,200 people and abducted another 253 on October 7, according to Israeli tallies, triggering the war in Gaza in which more than 34,000 Palestinians have been killed, according to Gaza health authorities. Beijing is continuing to commit genocide and crimes against humanity against Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities in its western Xinjiang province. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said in a report published on Monday, ahead of his planned visit to China this week, the State Department's annual human rights report, which documents abuses recorded all over the world during the previous calendar year. Repeated language from previous years on the treatment of Muslims in Xinjiang, but the publication raises the issue ahead of delicate talks, including on the war in Ukraine and global trade between the top U.S. diplomat and Chinese counterparts. In a preface, Lincoln said the report documents ongoing grave human rights abuses in the People's Republic of China PRC, for example, in Xinjiang. The PRC continues to carry out genocide, crimes against humanity, forced labor, and other human rights violations against predominantly Muslim Uyghurs and members of other ethnic and religious minority groups, Lincoln said in the preface. The section of Monday's report on China details the detention of more than one million people in camps and prisons and the use of re-education camps in Xinjiang, among other abuses committed against the broader Chinese population. Beijing is continuing to commit genocide and crimes against humanity against Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities in its western Xinjiang province, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said in a report published on Monday, ahead of his planned visit to China this week. The State Department's annual human rights report, which documents abuses recorded all over the world during the previous calendar year, repeated language from previous years on the treatment of Muslims in Xinjiang, but the publication raises the issue ahead of delicate talks, including on the war in Ukraine and global trade between the top U.S. diplomat and Chinese counterparts. In a preface, Lincoln said the report documents ongoing grave human rights abuses in the People's Republic of China PRC, for example, in Xinjiang. The PRC continues to carry out genocide, crimes against humanity, forced labor, and other human rights violations against predominantly Muslim Uyghurs and members of other ethnic and religious minority groups, Lincoln said in the preface. The section of Monday's report on China details the detention of more than one million people in camps and prisons and the use of re-education camps in Xinjiang, among other abuses committed against the broader Chinese population. The recent news also ended our global news program. Thank you for your attention and follow-up. Please continue to accompany us on our journey to discover the world situation, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new information. Goodbye and see you again.